Hello and welcome to Legislative Report with your state representative, Mario Scavello. I'm Laurie Bull. And today we have so much to cover. We're talking about education funding. Representative Scavello, welcome. Laurie, what a pleasure it is to be with you this, this morning. And uh, thank you for inviting me uh, here and to discuss education funding. Well, uh, do you hear a lot from your constituents about the system of education funding and how our schools are, are funded? It is our number one issue in Monroe County, the growth uh, and now the, the slowdown of the growth. But um, taxes, property taxes are a tremendous problem for many, many seniors, many families, folks on fixed incomes as well as families just haven't been able to keep up with the, the dollars coming in. But basically, today what I want to do is show how we got here basically in a way and then and then move on and then explain what the school districts have received from the state over the last 11 years. Well, something happened a couple years back. We, the federal government kicked in some stimulus funds. Correct. Um, it was welcome money in some sense, but also we had to be careful on, on how we used that money. Do you want to talk yeah. about the impact of those federal funds and, and what happened when they when they were taken sure. out of the sure. picture? I actually, if you go, my, my constituents go on YouTube and you can hear my comments on the House floor why we were doing this. I did not support the last few Rundell budgets because of the way the stimulus money was used. I felt stimulus should be used for a one-time item. You know, when, when you use uh, stimulus money and grow budgets, grow spending with monies that are not going to be available the year after, it is a bad thing. It's almost like businesses going to a bank to borrow money on a Friday to pay their employees. If they make no adjustments in the following week, what are they going to do the following week? Mm -hmm. And basically, that's what we did. I want to, if we can put that first chart up, and it's going to explain, basically, it's going to freeze in a moment in time where we were in 2011, 2012, mm -hmm. and that's when Governor Corbett took office and how the stimulus money was used. So if we can see that chart, we'll go right, there it is. Um, if you look at the, the pie chart there, percentage of the, of the overall budget for the 2011-2012, 10.9% of that budget was one time dollars. Those are federal stimulus dollars. And it was broken down, was $1.1 billion went into basic education, $91 million went into the state system higher ed, $173 million in corrections, and $1.8 billion in public welfare. Those were all stimulus dollars that were not available for the 2012-2013 budget. But on top of that, the funding, the, the revenues from the year before were a billion dollars off. So Governor Corbett takes office on, on the, and, and the day, first day he's in office, he's got a $4.1 billion shortfall. Oh, geez. <laughs> exactly. Not, not a great I, thing to if, walk into. <laughs> if I had a full head of hair, I would have lost it. <laughs> Now, I think that next shot is really a pretty good shot because it kind of shows you exactly where the spend number was and where the revenue. So if we could see that next chart. That line graph yeah, spending. Take, yeah, that, that line graph is perfect. The, the blue line is the spending. That's Governor Rendell's spending. The green bar is the state dollars that have come into the Commonwealth. That difference is stimulus money for those few mm -hmm. years. Now, if you don't have the money, the, when, the, when that stimulus money is over, you've got a problem, mm -hmm. a major problem. You're going to make some enemies because you're going to have to make some adjustments. Either that or you're going to raise taxes $4.1 billion. And that's what this man had to, you know, he did that without raising taxes. You can also see there just leading up before we received the stimulus money, more was spent and less yeah. was coming yeah. in. So the problem was already there then it was exacerbated. It by. was a, exactly right. And so when you throw more candy at someone and you spend it in the proper way, that's the problem. That's, that's what happens. I think that next shot really shows a, a, a little bit more of a breakdown and exactly how the, the um, if we can put the next chart up, it'll show a little bit more information on the, it'll, on the um, where, our, base, money comes where from. our money comes from, which is so sure. important. So in our uh, general fund budget, mm -hmm. there's various things that the money comes from various types of taxes. Mm -hmm. Do you want to mm -hmm. run through yeah, sure. a couple of Well, those? A, big, a big portion of our, of our revenues, of course, is personal income taxes, 40% of our general fund budget, and sales and use taxes, 32%. That's the sales tax. So between those two, it's a majority of our, of our, of our total revenue. But there are some others, non-tax revenue, inheritance tax, 3%. And that's something I think that we need to phase out eventually because 
it, you know, you've already paid tax on that money. Mm -hmm. And we did something for the family farm a, a year ago, which was so important. Farmers would, uh, um, would um, families, after the, the father passes, the farmer passes, the family would have to sell off a portion of the farm to pay the inheritance tax. We, we addressed it, and that doesn't happen anymore. The capital stock on franchise tax is at 1%. It's a, it's a tax that we're going to phase out. Cigarette tax collect about 3% of the budget. And is that falling? Uh Yes, it is. Okay. We, it's, we, it's, it's from a high of four and a half, five. So we are... People phased. are smoking less, I guess. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yes. Yes, they are. And oh, thank God for that. I thought, you know, because guess what? You might lose it on the revenue part, but you're paying it on the, on the, in, the P, in the public welfare part. We're going to show you next. Because if you don't have benefits and you're going into the hospital, we're paying for that. Right. So, you know, lung cancer and all the other stuff. That's so, one we would be glad yeah, to see go to I'd zero. I'd like to see go to zero <laughs> because I can then sure. show you on the, on the spending side where we won't have to spend it. And then the all other taxes is about 10% of the budget. And that encompasses the real, real estate transfer tax, table games and revenue, liquor tax, and a few others. And then nor the corporate net income tax is 9% of our budget. Okay. Now that's a piece that we need to address. That number needs to come down. We're up 9.99 when the, um, there's only one other state with a higher one than us of the 50 states. So that helps, reducing that will help us attract companies, corporations. We'll be a little more competitive, which in the end will exactly. be a benefit. Exactly. And, and a lot of those taxes came down in the in the recession, right? Exactly. You know, we weren't bringing in the, the you same weren't amount of money. The sales tax revenue was off. The realty transfer tax revenue was off. The personal income tax revenue. If you're not making it, you're mm -hmm. not spending it. And if you're not spending it, you, you lose on both sides. The next one, now, we just shown how the money comes into the Commonwealth. Now, this is how we spend the money. Okay. And understand one thing. We have to balance our budget. The, the, the two numbers, we can't spend more than what comes in. Washington, D.C. can print money. We in, in the Commonwealth cannot. Yes. Now, th this next chart shows you where the money is spent. Remember we said earlier about the cigarette tax? Well, yeah, we're collecting those cigarette dollars, but public welfare, 10.96. And, you know, the medical benefits for folks that don't have... Um, uh, there's, there's a whole gamut of things that go it's into the nursing It's not just public assistance. It's, yeah, exactly. But that, all the medical is in that number as well. Mm -hmm. That's 39% of our budget. It's the highest piece of our budget. Mm -hmm. $10 billion in education, $1.6 billion in higher education. The debt service, and that's the money that the state borrows for projects, is $1.15 billion per year. All other, there's $2.68 billion, and that, and that it goes into agriculture, the DEP, DCNR, legislature, state police. It's a, uh, that, catch -all. Well, it's a catch all. Yeah. And then the other one is corrections at $1.94 billion. What I'd love to see more money in the blue in the education, especially looking at the Korea Technical School in, in our area, Mon Monroe County Korea Technical Institute. I'd like to see that grow. I'd like to see not every student's going to go off to college. Nor should they. Yeah. I would love to see a trade taught to some of these kids when, they, when they're in school and not bring them from one building to another, you know. Teach them a trade. So when they get out of high school, they can right, go right into the workforce. And they're, they're in demand, welders, electricians, car The jobs are there. The jobs are there. And refrigeration mechanics, mm -hmm. auto mechanics. We need to do a better job of calling those kids and getting them prepared because if they're not, what happens? They're going to graduate and, and there's no jobs. And we as parents and, and teachers and guidance counselors need mm -hmm. to change our, our focus too and, and make sure we I emphasize agree. Julie, that, that is an important way to go. You're right. You're, you're, you're so right, Lori. And, and if you look at, if you increase it in the blue, mm -hmm. you will reduce it in the green and you'll reduce it in the orange. Yeah. I truly believe that. Put the money in the education side. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. Now as we go on here, let's talk a little bit about how Governor Rendell uh, dealt with the ba basic education dollars mm -hmm. uh, in regards to the federal stimulus money. Um, and I think this really pretty, this chart pretty much sh shows it all. Telling. It's really <laughs> telling because yeah. you hear all the time that Corbett cut basic education. And I've said this on the House floor and, and my constituents also can go up on the website and, and see the comments that I've made over the years. But if you go back to 2000, I, I wanted for this, I wanted a long, uh, I wanted to show you the whole scale and exactly right. where it went. And it shows from the first year on that chart, the Ridge, uh, Ridge year and then Swiker and then starts the Rendell years. But basic education has grown every year. Mm -hmm. Every year more state dollars went in. 
Look at what happened 09, 10, and 10, 11, the purple bars. That's when the stimulus money was used. And you'll say, well, where did the other money go? That other money was spent in other parts of the budget. So now, um, and, and the budgets were grew to five million five two three and five million seven seven six. So the appearance was Billion, we were spending me. more yes. on education. <laughs> However, from a state standpoint, we were giving less, and the federal government was what was making up the difference. We couldn't have said it any better, okay. Lori. Thank you. And then look at the next three years. I'm talking about state dollars, not the funny money, not the money that came from the stimulus money. Then the next three years, there's been a consistent increase in state dollars to basic education. But he gets, you know, tagged with the fact that we have it. We, if we don't have the dollars, and I pretty much said it. Actually, my family was affected by stimulus, like a stimulus. My, my daughter, M Missy, is a, a school teacher. And in 09 10, she got a promotion. She was out of the classroom and basically coaching other teachers. And I said to her, I says, you just got that job. It's a stimulus money job. In two years, you're back in the classroom. Don't make any long-term plans. She says, no, Dad. I says, yes. Sure enough, 2011, 2012, she's back in the classroom. Okay. So it's something that we knew. And anyone that says they didn't, shame on them because it's not I mean, true. certainly the schools were told not to exactly. spend these on uh, expenses that would go year to year to year. But... To, to use them as a one-time thing. The U.S. Uh, or the state Senate, excuse me, sent letters out to their school districts, right. letting them know, be careful, that stimulus money is not available to your app. Right. You know, and so. And I'm sure there are some schools that heeded that, and some that did not. And those are the ones that are complaining the next year. Yeah. Those are the ones that are saying, "Hey, we got killed." You know, it's so easy to spend mm -hmm. and grow budgets, and it's very difficult on the other side. And later on, you're going to see how we took each one of our school, uh, the school districts, and how the the enrollment and the um, and we'll we'll talk about that later and, okay. and spending. How, how that happens. So then, uh, overall, what, what was the effect on Monroe County Schools as far as their funding? Did they get funding increases in the last few years? You know what, I call that my report card because basically okay. what I did there is I, that top line, the blue bar, and it's across the bottom of the screen there, mm -hmm. that is what the school districts were receiving in total state dollars on a, on a yearly basis. So in 2001, 2002, Stroudsburg, East Stroudsburg School District was getting $4.7 million a year. Today, that number in 2013-14 is $34.8 million. It's a significant increase. Pocono Mountain School District went from $22.5 million to $53.4 million. Pleasant Valley went from $17.7 million to $38.2 million. And Stroudsburg School District back in 2002 was getting $10 million a year. They were at 26.3. So I pretty much said all along that I'm going to bring more education dollars back home to Monroe County. Our children deserve no less. However, I can't control how the money's spent. That, that needs, there's a school board that makes those decisions and makes, but th that pretty much shows you that our school districts over the last 11 years have done very well. Mm -hmm. Um, certainly there are expenditures that are increasing for mm -hmm. the school districts. Mm -hmm. uh, pension would be one of those. Can, yeah. can you talk a little bit about the, the growing pension problem that yes. we have? Yes, and, and actually that would have been a great place to use stimulus. And I think when we put the pension chart up, you, you will see what I'm talking about because that pension chart, the last, the last four Rendell years, he literally underfunded pensions. I spoke about it on the House floor. Again, anything I say, I'm saying here today, anything I'm saying here today was said on the House floor. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the 07, 08 year, he put $565 million. That, by the way, is the teachers' pensions and the state employees' pension. The following year was $470 million, $460 million, $415 million. I can tell you, we tried to put an amendment in 2007, 08. We did not have control of the House at the time to increase that to $800 million. To, and there was, Craig, uh, he's a judge now, Representative Craig Daly at the time, who's a judge in uh, Northampton County, uh, had the amendment on the House floor and went down party lines. Because we knew that this problem was happening. If we had front loaded, if we could put that screen up again, because I think it's so important, if we front loaded the pensions on the front end with about 800 million across, mm -hmm. we would not have these spikes that we're having today. And we didn't do that. We could have done it with stimulus money in the last two years. Or, but this is where I felt, and I said it on the floor, you can't 
do this because what you're doing is you're kicking the can into the future. And when you're doing that, an 800 million investment is going to be almost twice as much. I was going to say that. We look at the bar on the yeah. very end. It's, yeah. it's high. We're, we're giving way much more dollars than we did prior. But yeah. the problem is so much bigger now it, it, that this is not addressing it. It's not now. addressing it. Okay. If you had the dollars in, and again, I'd like to go back to that chart because it's so important. If we had the dollars in in 07, 08, if we increased it to 800 million, mm -hmm. okay, then this would have been almost a flat line. Mm -hmm. This was about, it would, by the, the peak would be about 11%, all right, of budget. You know, we're looking at 25s. Look at what, you know, remember I said Governor Corbett walked in with a $4.1 billion shortfall? Well, take a look at the, the first Governor Corbett year versus the last Rendell year. He put over 360, 370 million more into pensions. So $4.1 billion shortfall, 370 million more in pensions. Okay, and look at the next two years. Yeah. 110, 1 billion, 110, and 1 billion, 459. That's because it wasn't, it wasn't done. That's why I did, I did not vote for those budgets because of this. Mm -hmm. I just felt this was wrong. And, you know, if you push this off, you created a monster, and that's what was created here. So in addition to the state dollars for pension for teachers, the local school districts also have a portion exactly. they pay in as well. Exactly. And so those costs are rising for them. It's going to rise so for them. That is a hardship. And that's something that we need to, we've done some pension reform items. We've reduced the multiplier to two and a half. I think we need to reduce it again uh, mm -hmm. lower um, or some type of pension reform. Um, because if not, we're going to be, the, the school districts are going to be suffering. And, and basically it's, it's not their fault in this particular case. Mm -hmm. It's the state that did not step to the plate. Okay, so we've kind of set the table here. We've got the pension issue that is a hardship. However, on the, the opposite side, the state's been sending more state dollars to yes. the schools. How are the individual school districts in your uh, area well, dealing with this? Can we some, look at them one, yeah, one by one? Yeah, I, th I think some have done well, Laurie, and some have not. And. Um, I think that now they're pretty much all need to be with, where they need to be, basically. They've made the adjustments in the last year or so, but sometimes that's not healthy when you make those type of adjust, those drastic adjustments at one time. So if we can put up some of this, uh, the, the, each one of the school districts. Which one districts, do you want to start well, whichever with one, Whichever one comes up on the board, we could just go from... That's okay, right. that's the East Stroudsburg School District. Alrighty. Okay, no, it's just a... It, it, you know, they didn't do that bad, but there, there were a few things that the, they could have done. And now remember, when you see personnel, personnel is not just teachers, it's all the varied of people that sure. work within the school district. But if you look at 06, 07, they had 1,309 personnel, and their complement, the enrollment was 8246. The next year, they pretty much were flat. You know, they lost, they, 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 uh, lost five students, but um, they put on 41 people. Mm -hmm. The following year, they, they dropped about 100 um, 100 uh, students, mm -hmm. and they put on, on, you know, in total from the base year, it was about 73 students, if you take the 1309. 73 personnel. Personnel, yes. excuse me, 73 sure. personnel. And then, and then the following year, they, they dropped 124 students, and they're still, from the base year, up 58 in personnel. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're start, the corrections are starting to they're come. They're starting right? the corrections, but understand those corrections cost you money. Mm -hmm. and, and frankly, when you do it all at one time, like if you go down to the last one, uh, 1276, they, 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 they tr that was a big cut in, yeah. in, in one year. And sometimes when you do those type of things, you make cuts that, you, you make cuts that maybe you shouldn't be making because it's almost like at a panic stage. But for the most part, they, they, in total, they lost 673 students and their and their personnel is down 33 from the base year. Now can I talk overall about yeah. um, your area has always been considered a, a growth area. Why are the numbers, is that starting to change? Uh, we have a couple Enrollments things. dropping here. Uh, enrollments dropping but there's a few things that we have on, uh, uh, that kind of unique and I was shocked to see this. Um, if you look at Philly and Pittsburgh we're number three as far as uh, cyber students. Oh wow! Okay. So a lot of our students went to cyber education. Okay, so, so that, that could be some of it. And then we do have some empty homes because of property taxes. You know, I, I was just talking to a realtor just recently. He, he sold a house, and the mortgage was uh, three hundred eighty-six dollars a month, and the taxes were eight hundred dollars a month. 
Yeah, I know. Chuck. <laughs> I told that to some of the members. They says, no way. I says, yeah, <laughs> it is. And, and those are the type of things that happen uh, when we in, in, in the Commonwealth pass a law and don't go back and, and realize and try to correct that law. And that's the 1991 law back in where they froze um, at a moment in time the 1990 census. So from 1991 to 2001, um, if let's say the state puts 2% into basic education, everybody gets it. Now, in 1990, Philadelphia, for example, I, I pick on Philly, but it really could be any inner city. Philadelphia had um, lost three or four reps in that period of time, so lost a tremendous amount of population. They're still getting funded off a of 1990 census. If you were in an area that Pro, uh, your population stayed the same, okay, you got paid equal. But if you're in an area that grew, like our area tripled in, in, mm -hmm. in, in population, in, in student population. So, and you're still getting funded at base of a 1990. So from 2001 to, two, uh, from 1991 to 2001, if the state puts 2% into basic ed, everybody gets it. If you lost population, you stayed the same or you grew. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you do that for 10 years, you're gonna hurt people. Now, and yet there's winners, which there's makes winners. it difficult exactly, to change. Exactly, exactly. And I always say PPL because they kind of rule the roost if they, roll to, if they vote together. Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, the Lehigh Valley, and uh, Luzerne and Lackawanna. If they roll, vote together, they, they, you know, we've got to, it, it's, it's not easy. Yeah, yeah. It's not an easy thing. But so uh, basically in the last 11, and I pretty much showed you in that earlier chart, we've done well. But we still have not, and that's why I have a problem with any time we pass any property tax bill, like the one that was passed, if you don't address, if you want to give me options, I'll take the options to how to get revenue for my school district. However, you have to make me whole for what I didn't receive from 1991 to 2001. Mm -hmm. And that's where I, you know. So let's go to the next school district, because I think the uh, next one is really uh, an eye-opener. This one here is the worst. They've made some, they made dramatic moves, but just look at that first line. In 06, 07, they had 1,675 personnel, 11,028 enrollment, okay? In the next year, they plus 64 personnel and lost 222 students. Now, if this was a business, that's a tremendous increase. Mm -hmm. The next year, 08, 09, now I'm going to use I'm going to give you 122 because that's a plus from the 06 number, okay? Sure. And you lost another 246 students. So 400. Yeah. Some students. You, know, you lost over 468 students, and we have 122 more personnel. If I if my if the folks at that Pocono Mountain School District went and get their property taxes those years, you could see three four hundred dollar increases. Mm -hmm. You know, in um, in the next year, the 09-10 year, another, uh, it's, they plus another six students, so they're at 128 over the base year. They lost another 300, I mean, uh, 100, another six personnel, but they lost another 331 students. And, and that was one of the uh, stimulus years. That was one of the stimulus years. The next year, 10-11, they, they're still 125 personnel over the base year and now they lost another another 200 and th uh, excuse me another 517 students mm, at that point at that point so you know if there were trends happening in 2007 2008 maybe it was cyber school yeah uh, it wasn't being corrected for until it yeah. was really got in, too late in 11 in 11 12 and 12 13 and I'm telling you they're not healthy when you cut 146 personnel in one year it is not a healthy situation mm -hmm. for the school because you're making cuts you know just you know t to get to where you need to be and and sometimes you cut programs maybe you shouldn't mm -hmm. but plus then, they're members of community of, of the community exactly. that are now out of exactly a job. and that's one of the reasons why I went to the leadership and I asked for some dollars to be able to uh, give an offer to teachers close to retirement um, and then bring back some of the younger teachers that were let go. Mm -hmm. it, you can't say you got to hire, you know, you can't, you can see you can't plus, you, you know what I'm saying? But then look at last year, a 316 personnel in one year. Wow. 
you know, you, when you do those type of things, it's not good. It's, but unfortunately, they had to get to where they had to go and, and because of the enrollment decline. In, from 06, 07 to 2013, they lost 1,914 students. And I believe they've lost a couple hundred more in the year that we're in right now. And they made an adjustment of 360 in, the, in, the, in personnel, but that was all done in the last two years. Wow. So you've been paying taxes on, you know, and, and they were constantly hiring when the, you've got a new superintendent there, and I know she's had to make some tough decisions, but um, the, the superintendent that was there before did a, a horrible, horrible job, and I'm saying it on camera, did a horrible job. He, he, he inflated um, personnel, even in the, in the offices, with, he brought more lieutenants, and I think the money should be in the classroom. I like to see smaller class sizes. Our problem has been over the years, we've loved to build buildings. And we need to you know, look back and, and, and learn from our mistakes. Um, you don't build buildings. You try to do it what you have because when you start to put that type of debt on, Pocono Mountain School District has $270 million in debt that they have to pay off. Just like you saw that little debt chart on the chart, the debt service that we have here at the, at the sure. Commonwealth. Well, Pocono Mountain's got $270 million. It's about 15, 16 percent of their, of their overall budget. Mm. That's a tremendous debt that they're going to have to pay off and that's because of the construction and the buildings that were done in all of those years. I imagine if Pennsylvania is to solve this school funding problem, uh, in your opinion, do both parties have to come together? What's the responsibility of the school district and what's the responsibility of the state? I would imagine both are going to have to work together here. Without a doubt, because you just can't continue to throw money at, at a school and the school continues to spend it. And you can see the last chart and what, what's happened there. Well, you know, you, you know, Pocono Mountain School District went from $22.5 million to $53.4 million. Mm -hmm. But if I give you $3 million a year, let's say in this particular case, um, you're supposed to use that money not to raise taxes, not to spend it as extra money. And, and, and in this period of time, the school district also received, the, the, the taxpayer received that gaming revenue, which is about $300, $400 in Monroe County for the school districts. And you don't see it in their property tax. Their property taxes up went significantly. I, 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 lo I look back, I look back and, and, and I'm, the conversations that I've had with superintendents, like for example, Pocono Mountain, don't build that West High School. Keep all the students on the one campus. Uh, it's a $95 million um, uh, building that they built, whereas on the East Campus they had uh, an elementary center there and they had an intermediate. I says, make that the high school complex. Build an intermediate or an elementary somewhere else. The elementary is about $25, $30 million. Not 95 billion. Yeah. You know, and of course, you know, and then you start cr splitting the schools. You got different colors. You create all kinds of, of social issues be that you that that you didn't need to have. Well, we have just one minute left. Um, I guess this all kind of comes down to one thing, which is rising property taxes. That's probably the big concern. Yeah. Just a closing comment on on um, going forward. What can be done about that? Well, uh, we, we did pass this bill. We need to continue to look for other revenues. I, need to, I want to see something done at the state level before you give me the options. Create, create some um, revenue stream to offset what the school, growing school districts in the Commonwealth did not receive. I see us growing. There's some growing areas like Northampton County is growing now. They put on uh, 50,000 people in the last decade. They're going to start to be uh, supporting property tax reform because they see what's happening to them. Um, there are other areas, Berks County, Lancaster, York, they're growing. The ones that are growing are going to support whatever we try to do. But the ones that have lost population, they want status quo. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Yeah. We, we could talk an hour more, I think. <laughs> yes, it is. And I, we didn't get to talk about Strasburg School District, but I just briefly, Strasburg School District, their personnel is down 102, and, 700, and they lost 752 students. But Strasburg also, in the last year, made some deep cuts that maybe should have been done sooner. We didn't show the sheets, but uh, if anyone wants to sit down with me, I can, you know, you can call my office and I can gladly show them. And Pleasant Valley, for the most part, did a very good job. If you look at bar graph at Pleasant Valley, whatever they lost, you know, they made adjustments on a yearly basis. So it can be done. School districts can do it. 
And on that note, we'll have to end today. And that's all the time we do have. If you have any questions for Representative Scavello or you would like some of the information that we talked about today, please contact him at his local office. And join us again next time for Legislative Report.